stealing files without privilege escalation, networking, or storage. We're exfiltrating with optics and a smartphone. All that and more this time on Hack 5. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. My name is Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of techno lust. Welcome yes. back to the studio. It's fun it's to do a payload series thingy with you. With me, yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I'm going to explode all the things here. It's going to be good. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know about don't that. Know. Well, we got to blow up the old <laughs> place before we move into the new place, right? Shh, shh, keep that on the DL, man. Oh, okay. We're going to do that later, but we got something super fun to you today for you. So as we know, the most basic input and output of a computer is a keyboard and the screen. Duh. It is the primary way that we as humans interact with our machines. So the question today is, can we use just those to effectively exfiltrate files? Yes. So to start, Darren. Yeah. What do you think would make a good payload? Okay, so get this, right? Basically, the concept is we're going to attack a Windows machine because, sorry, but you normally what I find in offices I walk into and you guys have the Windows juiciest data. Yeah, <laughs> so targets a Windows machine. We're going to try to use keystroke injection techniques only. So no storage, no network. We could use the ducky, we could use the bunny. Mm -hmm. But the, the concept here is we are going to rely only on that lo user's local privileges. So just what they can oh, type with their own so fingers. So no administrator. No admin, no escalation, and no dependencies. That's okay. another big thing. Want to be able to develop a payload that you can just plug in and it'll go, and then you can just record the screen, walk away. Okay. You know, this is perfect for that situation where you can't rely on being able to get nice escalation or, or they've got right. it locked down to where you can't use network for exfiltration uh -huh. or USB storage. So I'm thinking like, you know, one of those bank jobs or something where they've actually done the due diligence and there's okay. actual security there. So, right. th so it's really, <laughs> this is more of like a, a thought one where it's like, hey, can we just can we use do this? basic I.O.? So you're going to find out with us. Yes. So the only thing that we are relying on here is the user's ability to actually type at their keyboard, just like, you know, keyboard strong cat. Bad. <laughs> or strong bad. Yeah, that works too. You gotta get the and their computer's ability to show pretty pictures on a screen. So that's literally all you need. And if done properly, the concept is that we will be able to capture the desired, desired media, uh, not over flash storage or ethernet or Wi-Fi like we normally would in a penetration testing scenario, but optically. So like physically to a smartphone. So I'm going to take my uh, smartphone out. I like that out. idea. We're just going to record onto a smartphone. So you pop in your ducky or your bunny, you have the payload, scan the drive for the, uh, whatever good stuff you want to find, and then display it out so that we can record on the screen, and then off we go. Because this way, no logs. <laughs> and that's kind of beautiful. So here's the thing. I'm not dead set on the encoding technique here, although okay. I would like to be able to get more than just ASCII, right? Mm. If this were, a, like, if I was just looking for text files here, I would do, like, type secretplans.txt, pipe it to more. Take a picture of it. And then, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then have the ducky script like every uh, half second or something hit the space bar to page across. And then you just record it and it would right. be very different. That would be like a lossy situation where you wouldn't actually be re-encoding bit for bit. Mm -hmm. You'd just watch the video file and actually read the secret plans. Okay. It's not the way it works in this day and age. What we of want course. are the XLS <laughs> files. We want the, you know, uh, docx files. We oh, want all okay. of the, you know, so, the easiest way for me to interpret that stuff into ASCII so that I can get stuff out is to base64 encode it. Yeah! Um, right? Now, before going down that rabbit hole, though, I do want to actually proof of concept this thing, which means it's really easy to just hop on my Linux box. Okay. So, if we take a look here, for instance, I've got a couple of files, and, and really I just want to take a moment to go ahead and figure out, you know, how feasible is this to get a good amount of data in a short amount of time? Okay. So, with, with just Optic. So, what I've chosen to do here is take this uh, kirby.jpg file and Aww, basically, yay. I mean, I could just cat, you know, that file, but the, um, no pun intended, but I'm just going to get a bunch of binary data. So, instead, I'm actually going to do a base64 curvy.jpg, and there you go, okay. right? So that's easy enough. Yeah, I get this big blob, and <laughs> well, you know, really what I want to do though is this is this is too much data. I right. want to be able to iterate through it line by line. Thankfully, mm. that's easy enough by just passing all of that. Here we go. I'll increase this a little bit as well. Uh, if I just pipe that over to while read, and then, I don't know, pick a letter R, and then what we'll do is do echo dollar sign r and then done okay that looked cool although i got to say it's 
it's pretty dumb. <laughs> it's like the worst use of a while read ever that I've pretty much ever seen. Yeah, basically. So you're, you're literally just reading each line of the file and then you spit it back out. And then at that font size, there's going to be a few problems. First off, you won't be able to read it all on your phone. And then two, reconstructing that, I mean, even with OCR, if you're using OCR, it's going to be kind of impossible. Well, we're not done yet. I mean, yes, you're right. Okay, that is, okay well, but what, but what? I'm seeing some issues, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm building on it. Okay, so what that read command thing is doing, actually, if we take a look at that command again, and I'll, and I'll just make it up here, is we're saying, okay, for every line in the file, read that line, store that line in the letter R, then we can do stuff with it. So what are we going to do? Well, in this case, I'm just echoing it back out to the terminal. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's you know no different than just running this, except it's slightly slower. What it means, though, is I can now do more interesting stuff with it. So instead of just encoding it in Base64, I'm going to take that line, and I'm going to pipe it over uh, and make a QR code ASCII with it. So for that, I'm going to use QR encode with TAC T and C. And what that'll do is it'll make an, like right there in the terminal, an ANSI representation of what I'm creating here. And um, all right, so let's go ahead and see an example. You want to go ahead and record this? Sure. All right. Hold on. So maybe you guys can see it at home as well. Aha! That is oh, wow. a lot of That's QR That's going codes. really fast. Yeah. OK. OK. How long do I have to stand here? It might be a while. OK, I'm just going to stop recording. <laughs> OK, so yay, it works. Clearly. Clearly. Absolutely. OK, yeah, this is actually the part where the rubber meets the road and what's okay. important about developing any payload. You see, my kirby.jpg file is exactly one megabyte okay. because I want to be able to get a baseline of how long it takes. And um, to be honest, our little secret, it's not actually a JPEG of Kirby. Uh, you can do the exact same thing to create a one megabyte file with dd if equals slash dev slash u random. And then your of equals, you know, whatever you want. So like test file.txt. And then if you say bs equals 1024 and um, count equals 1024, what you're going to get, whoops, not 2014. 2014. Anyway, it, okay, I see in this case, I got almost two Too megabytes because yeah. I didn't, it would have been uh, 2048. <laughs> right. Booyah. And now I've got a two meg file. You get the idea. Okay. Just a little tip for you there. Actually, here's the fun thing about this. I can find out how many lines this is now because we're going to find out all the things that is wrong with this. So if I base64 kirby.jpg and pipe that to wc for word count, tech l for the lines, I'll see it has. Oh, wow. Yeah, 18,397 lines. Okay. And basically, um, I, I can actually time this, how long it's going to take to QR codeify all of this um, with the aptly named time command, and then it'll look something like this. If I do control A back to the front and do time space that, and then we just sit here <laughs> and wait forever. And if I make this font bigger, you can see here that the real time was about a minute and 38 seconds. Mm. So yeah, proof of concept, I would say that doesn't even account for the fact that the final payload actually needs to bring its own QR generating script most likely in PowerShell. I feel like this would end up being a really awkward scenario with the penetration tester and like a security person coming by and being like, why are you standing there recording on your phone for an hour? That's, that's probably the <laughs> least of the concerns here because... Well, there, there's another problem yeah. uh, that I was watching the video on my phone, which mm -hmm. does about 30 FPS. I can go up to 60 FPS, but that takes up a lot of memory, so I just record in 30. But um, for a lot of smartphones out there, you can only get a video like recording at 30 FPS. So if you look at the playback, it's going to be horrible, like smeared all together and everything. So you're going to miss some of those QR codes. You're never going to be able to systematically extract all of those frames and then reassemble the data. In fact, you don't <laughs> even have all the data. So even assuming the best case scenario of 30 FPS, yeah. maybe even 60, which does not account for any rolling shutter or artifacting, yep. those 18,397 QR codes would require 600 14 seconds just to transmit. Right, if we're transmitting 30 of them every second rather yeah. than this, which is as fast as the video so can like, go. So that's like, that's about 10 minutes or so. 
Yeah, 10 yeah. minutes for a megabyte. And so. actually, to be honest, that's optimistic at best. You I figure like this isn't working so you, well. You figure with a good margin, you know, it would actually take a little bit more like 30 minutes to get uh, <laughs> <laughs> to get a megabyte out of there, yeah, which, and, you know, tough. interestingly, yeah, those, the, con the conversation with the security guard is going to be interesting to right. say the least. <laughs> um, but to put this into perspective, 30 megabytes for one minute one is uh, for one megabyte. Yeah, sorry, 30 minutes for one megabyte, 550 something bytes. That's a little over 4,000 baud, okay. which is far less than the 9,600 baud requirement of the 1993 id title Doom. <laughs> <laughs> which is a different kind of FPS. Okay, so what we have learned today yes. is going any, into any kind of good payload idea, it's really important to outline its requirements. So in our case, it was to develop a technique of recording the screen as a means for arbitrary data exfiltration without any kind of privileged escalation. So you kind of got there. <laughs> Number two is before building out the payload, the proof of concept, uh, you should proof a concept it with some kind of off the shelf, shelf tools to determine if it has any kind of viability. So in our case, Not it's cool, so ever. I guess, but totally impractical practical for anything bigger than like a few kilobytes. And even then you've got to fro it's front not load work the so script that, to generate the QR code and that's gonna, any, I so don't then, know. Then we have number three. So binary data is going to be easier on the eyes when base64 encoded, but on Linux, it's just a matter of using the base64 command, which is cool. Yep, However, sure. on Windows, there's a power PowerShell command. It's that, one's a little, that. Yeah, it's this. A little longer. <laughs> so quick and easy test uh, you should do. And then there's number four. You can create quick and easy test files of any size uh, in Linux using DD with a source of slash dev slash u random. You can even use slash That's dev cool. slash zero, but all you're going to get are cool. all zeros. And then number five. QR encode for Linux. It's a that, very man. handy tool for making QR codes on the command line in ASCII or ANSI. And it will even do PNGs, EPS, or SVG if you are looking for bitmap or vector art as opposed to just like, yay, JPEGs. I love this tool. Yeah, that is a very, very cool tool. It's good for like air gapped key exchange. Yeah. I think we did that once using like PGP keys and That's two machines true. that were air gapped. Yeah. But it's, you know. It's good times. Yeah. And not then, good for a lot of data. There is one more thing. Mm. And number six, for me at least, the time command does exactly what it says on the tin. So if you want to use time, you totally can. It works just like you would think it does. So and there's some good parts and then there's oh, some pretty big negatives. You can time time. And it took no time to time. You can time <laughs> man woman. And it took it took zero point zero seven eight seconds to tell me that there was no manual entry for women. It's true. Uh, number seven, though, I would say is that if you're going to go back to 1993 and play a Doom death match, you're going to need at least a 9600 baud modem. But really, to to completely pwn, you want a 288. Oh my gosh! Just saying. I was such a baby at that point. Like, did you not start death matching until like Quake Three? Unreal Tournament. UT? No, it was before that. UT99. You should have a UT99 death it, match. Yeah. Either that or Quake. One of those. Got it, it wasn't Doom though. It wasn't Doom. Those were good times. I was busy with like. Some other oh, goosebumps. Got Escape it. from Horrorland. Wah! You know me. I was just an HPB. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to be the first one to admit that this payload went wrong from the start, as it often does, because you know what I did? I fell into the trap of start coding first, which is what my first in, in reaction is when I've got a great idea. I want to start writing code, and I went down the rabbit hole of you know finding all the cool PowerShell modules to build QR codes. So I'll link those in the show notes because there's cool stuff you can do with them. It was only until I got deep into it that I realized, hey, how practical is this really? Mm. So I just wanted to demonstrate that sometimes doing a rubber meets the road test is uh, ideal. <laughs> it's very important to, to go the through least. the entire testing procedure before you get onto your penetration test. Yes. Your location. Test your stuff before you very test their stuff. Very important. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? <laughs> Does this technique lend itself to other information gathering payloads? If you have a payload that you would like us to feature, head over to hack5.org slash payload and drop us a line. We would yeah. love to check them out. Feedback at hack5.org. Leave a comment below. Let us know. Maybe you have a better idea for a way to do this better times. Better times. Better times. Time times better. Times better. 
Nope, I have to in, I have to get installed better. What is this, Shannon? So before we leave, of course, we always like to show off stickers from the community. There's a lot of really cool hackers out there that like to share stickers with us for our sticker walls. So this week, I have two that were sent to us. One is from Jason over at Skinny Research and Development, who sent us a couple of his own logo stickers. Oh, I like it. Very cool. Yeah, cool research and development R&D stuff over at Skinny. So definitely check him out. He's over at skinnyrd.com if you want to check out what he does. And we also got a little message from Tombs DK, who said, just some stickers, uh, just some stickers for the wall. Thanks for the great videos. And they say, <laughs> they're so cute. Ooh. They're little three and Ooh. a half inch No, floppies. they're five and a quarters. Are they? Oh, yeah. yeah right. Talking and they about 9600 They say, make cyber great again. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> back before this it's was cute. a cyber industry, that meant something totally different on IRC. Oh yeah, that's Thank you, you for know, this. That's definitely yep. going on the wall. Talking about uh, yeah. showing your age, uh, man. What? <laughs> right? <laughs> well, what's weird about it is because the industry mo moves so quickly, it does seem like um, like archaic. It seems almost like um, like so archaeology weird. to dig up a 288 even. Um, hey, as long as we're put putting stickers up on the wall, I just got back from South Africa and I figure you know, if our buddy Casey is going to go ahead and rock a Wi-Fi pineapple sticker in the back of his set, oh. we'll rock a uh, I Heart Camps Bay, which is pretty cool. Very cool. So, just pop that guy over there. <laughs> nice. Yes. <laughs> if you want to send stickers as well, you can just check out hack5.org slash address for the address to send them to. And that'll always find the best place wherever we may be. Yes. I can't wait to find Shh. out where we're next. Shush. Okay, in the meantime, I'm Darren Kitchen. <laughs> I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your techno lust. Domain.com has all your website needs from .com and .net domains to intuitive website builders so you can take that first step in creating your online identity. Let me tell you, there's no domain extension like a .com or a .net, or if you want to brand yourself, Domain.com has over 300 domain extensions like .club and .space. These guys are huge fans of Hack5. They're affordable, reliable. We've been using them for years. They've got all the tools you need to share your ideas with the world. And because they're such big fans, they are hooking you up with 15% off their already affordable prices. So get domain names and web hosting and email, and just be sure to use that coupon code HAK5. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. I kind of like False Bay better. I don't know. False Bay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like this point, and then there's the Atlantic, and then, and then the Indian Ocean is there, and then they're all like mixing. There's not a dotted line. There is one on the map. But like in real life, like you go to the point, it's not there. I don't know where your mind is right now. Yeah, I'm lost. Southernmost tip of Africa. Oh, dotted line. I get it. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking about like physical geography, like a real world. I was told that they paint like, them every morning, but they wash away. There's not. Have you ever been over the states? Like going from California oh, to Oh, the grids Nevada are really cool. Yeah. Because the one mile grids from the... <laughs> No, no, there's no the grid. Way, no, there is a grid because the way there that they no parceled out the country, you know, there's no dotted lines, but the country was parceled out. There's a Wendover production video that explains all this. So it's fantastic if you haven't subscribed to already. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs>